Hey y'all, this is Robin with a, another great RPG Maker MZ tutorial. And today we've got a really cool one. Uh, I was really excited about getting into uh, uh, creating a tutorial like this. It's um, uh, We're going to event a picture-based menu. And someone from one of the Discord communities I'm in had asked for, hey, how can... Uh, what plugins are out there? How can I create my own? Um, and of course, I'm always trying to create my own. Uh, I'm always trying to avoid plugins. And so I thought this was great. I knew there was a way to do it. I just wasn't 100% sure on how to do it. And doing a little digging, I found that there was a tutorial online. Right? You know, RPG Maker does their own little tutorials. And uh, this one's done by um, Hidden One. It's a really good tutorial. It goes over how to create a picture-based menu based off of events and some uh, your own custom pictures. Uh, there's a few things I didn't like about this tutorial, and one thing right off the bat was they don't provide any artwork. So that's gonna be like the first step is like, hey, well, I'm gonna provide you artwork so you can at least understand what's happening. Uh, there were a couple other things that I'm gonna go over that have to deal with timing of the event and how the event works with weights. And and how we tint uh, buttons in the menu so we can show like what's highlighted, what's selected. So, but overall, it's a really good tutorial, really cool. I'm gonna post a link of it in the description of this video. But you know, this is what we're gonna be going for right here. Here's the uh, it in action. And so you're gonna have your little character here and you just press the menu button you can see that there's no menu at the currently if we hit escape and you can see it will be able to uh, use the keyboard and navigate through uh, the phone menu so this is going to be maybe a two or three part video and uh, the first part is going to be just following their tutorial and navigating through the, using the keyboard, the left and right keys, and escape and enter to go in and out of the keyboard uh, menus, right? Because we can go into the menus right here, go to save, and you will be able to navigate to like whichever menus you want to once you get an understanding of like how this whole event works. And it's fairly straightforward, it, um, but you know there's a lot to it for sure. Um, but I'm going to try to make it really easy to understand. Uh, as well as, there's a plugin that comes default with MZ. So all that works is going to work with MV. This other bit, um, we're going to be able to touch. I uh, use our mouse. And again, for mobile, it's going to work with touch input. You're going to be able to select either one, and that's going to bring you right into whatever menu you select. And so that's a plugin for MZ obviously you can probably just steal it from MZ and throw it into MV totally totally possible the most likely the core code that it uses or to hex onto is the same um, so overall I think this is a really cool tutorial and I really hope everyone uh, enjoys it um, so let's go ahead and get started and one additional note is that this is I'm gonna provide this artwork this is obviously some custom artwork that not custom artwork this is like the MZ characters full art characters but it's gonna be part of it so I think it's okay to share I, I'm not really worried uh, and this is just gonna be a phone background with some buttons that I created so I really like it I like what they did with their tutorial uh, sadly they didn't provide there any artwork I'm not sure why but it's okay I'm gonna provide artwork for you and sorry because of this being such a large program uh, event and I don't have two monitors is I'm gonna be doing a little bit jumping back and forth to make things a little bit easier for myself so until I get a second monitor okay so let's get started we're gonna um, open up RPG Maker MZ I'm gonna create a new project vent a phone menu Okay. Just gonna put that in my tutorials folder, and so you're go you're starting with me just right from scratch. And now I kind of create like all 
projects. So first thing I like to do, I don't like having so many following characters. That's just me. You can do whatever you want. Um, I just like don't like seeing them run around. Um, first off, they're going to we're going to follow their tutorial, and and I'm going to tell you the changes that I make along the way. So first, we're, we're going to need artwork, right? So they provide they don't really provide this, right? So I'm going to provide it, and my artwork is right here. Uh, on my desktop, uh, we have the phone background, and we have three buttons. And the reason why we don't use the full art or full size and matching size for the phone background is because of the touch point, and that's part of the plugin. Um, that's how the plugin uses it. it uses the size of the button to determine the touch area. So. If you don't want to deal with mixing or messing around with the coordinates, you can create your buttons the same size as the phone menu background. And then you can but you'd only be able to navigate with the keys. Okay. So just so you know, I think it ideally you should always just have your phone background and then your button. And so you you should be able to position this button wherever you want because most likely you're gonna to wanna to mess with touch. Um, so I'm gonna provide provide this. So what we're gonna do before we get too far. I'm just gonna copy these. I'm gonna go to my project folder. MZ tutorials event of phone menu. Man, dang, <laughs> typos. Okay. Um, we go to image pictures, and since they're pictures, we're gonna be using the show picture command, and we're just gonna pre present these. So we need them first. Cool. Um, then we're gonna create this auto run event, and we're gonna disable the menu access. Okay. They want to turn on a switch to kind of show, hey, we've enabled the phone menu switch. I'm gonna rename this. I don't like that they call it random switch one. That doesn't mean anything to me. And then self switch A is also. It only runs one time, but it's an auto run event. Um, okay. I forgot to check what time, how much time we had. Okay. I'm trying to limit the videos to like 15 minutes max before I cut them up. Sorry. So, I'm going to create this auto run event. I was like throwing my auto run events all the way in the corner. And we're going to, um, change menu access, I think that is here. System settings, change menu access. We're going to disable it. Then we are going to create a switch. And I'm going to say phone menu on or enable. I should say enable. And again, I like, since it's a switch, I like naming them. So is phone menu enabled? Yes, it is. We're going to set that to yes or to on. And self switch A is on. New page. Self switch A is on. Perfect auto run. Yay. So that's going to just disable the menu for us because now we're going to replace it um, with our own phone menu. So, how they're going to do that is they create a common event and it's going to be a parallel event and it's based on whether that phone menu access switch is on. Cool. Cool. Um, then we're going to we are going to check to see if the cancel button is being pressed and then if it is we're going to show all these pictures okay now okay let's get that started and you'll see that i have they have four buttons but i only made three buttons because it's going to be a little bit easier and a little bit quicker but it carries over all the logic carries over but by any means feel free to um, ask me any questions so, sorry, go to common events, we're going to go phone menu, you can call it whatever you want, it's going to be a parallel event based on is phone menu enabled, okay, yes it is, we're going to create a conditional branch based on a button press button, is cancel being pressed, And now we're going to show. 
uh, all those buttons. So let's go. Sorry, sh show all those images. That includes the phone background, right? So show picture. We're gonna do a called it phone. You can name them whatever you want. If you want to put them together, you can. Excuse me. Prefix them. It's perfectly fine. Phone background. Upper left. I like to use upper left. You know, it kind of makes more sense to me. The because the ori origin starts in the upper left, and then I center them. Um, I did create. Let's see. So, I did some math already. I got the width and height of the screen, which is 816 by 628, and I did some math. So, I'm kind of just getting a shortcut, doing this myself, um, but basically I got the size of the phone background, which is width and height, and got the height which is 816 minus the width here sorry the width here minus the width here and divide by 2 and that kind of centers the image for me and the same thing for height so e it's easier so 624 minus 600 is 24 divide that by 2 is 12 cool and that gave me the positioning of how to center the artwork on screen so I'm going to let this video go for a little bit longer, but it looks like it's probably going to be a two-parter for sure. It might be a three-parter, actually. So, anyways. So, I'm just going to copy these notes directly in here. Don't worry about the plugin command. That goes. That's part of the touch input. Um, but I'll provide these notes in the description as well, so it's just easy copy and paste for you guys. Um, so, it's going to be 240 and 12. And then I'm going to show another picture, which is going to be my button. Button 1. That's going to be number 2. And that is going to be 290 and 62. And again, based on the size of your buttons and the size of your phone, these positions may change, right? These, these are specifically for my artwork. Uh, so that was 250 and D6. Sorry, I forgot. Okay, it was 290, 62. 290, 62. Okay, then I'm just going to copy, paste, paste. It's going to be number three, button two. And the height Y is going to be the same. 373, 373. This is going to be number 4, button 3. And the X is going to be 456. 456. Okay. So when we press the cancel button, it's going to show this. Um, these buttons and their position they look fantastic and centered uh, next let's see they add a weight here and I'm this is where some of the changes I made because I felt that these weights are put in because as we're navigating using the keyboard we have to wait because of these this events being called since it's on a parallel it's been called every frame and so we have to put a weight in there so we're not going too fast, navigating too quickly, and updating, um, doing updates on every frame. We have to wait to do updates and check uh, variables. So this is where I'm going to kind of jump to my other project and grab a few things. Grab my already pre-made project. And I'm going to provide the finished project so everyone uh, is good there. And again, this would be done on like a second screen, but I only have one monitor, sorry. But, uh, so, gonna have a wait five frames and then a 
random variable is going to be 1. Okay. Alright. So, I'm going to add a weight of 5 frames. Then, going to create a new variable. This is going to be um, selected button current selected button and that's going to be set to 1 okay now they cho they chose to wait 5 frames there wait 10 frames here again I, I fixed timing and I'll explain those timings at the end of it when it's all created and then set the variable to 1 and that's going to be the current selected button so the first button is going to be button 1, 2, 3 for their case, they have four. We're only going to have three. And then we need to create a loop. And we need to stop the player movement for so many frames. Because as you press left and right, we're not actually pausing the game. Um, so you'll see NPCs and possibly enemies that if, if they're moving around, they'll continue to move because we're not actively pausing the game. We just bring up a, a fake menu as our new menu. So we have to pause the player from moving around. So it create we set that movement there. And then uh, we'll check if the button left and button right are being pressed. If left is being pressed, we subtract that variable. So we move it to the left, our button selection to the left. If it's to the right, we move our button selection to the right. Also, because we wanted to wrap around you know, if button 1 is being selected, we go back to 0. It actually should go to button 3. And if they press right when it's button 3, it should go to back to button 1. So we have these other variables that we set. Okay. So we're going to do that. And as the buttons are being pressed, we also add another weight. Okay. So let's create a loop and we are going to check I'm going to do this real quick we are going to check if button if left button is being pressed and then if right button is being pressed okay if left button is being pressed we want to subtract one, copy and paste, and if right button is being pressed, we want to add one. Okay. And if our variable equals zero, we want to change that variable, copy and paste. We want to set that variable to three. Again, if you wanted to wrap around. This is going to go to the X number, right? So I only have three buttons, so I'm going to set it to button three. One, two, and three. Setting it to button three. It starts at one, wraps backwards to three. Otherwise, it's going to wrap forward the other way. See? So another one is going to be another condition if our variable equals 4 we're going to set that to 1 so if it goes backwards subtracts to 0 move it to 3 if we add it to 4 we then set it to 1 okay and i'm going to have to cut the video break here um thanks for watching i know this is going to be a long video but I'll be right back for part two. Cool? Thanks for watching.